All right, so if you, how do you know if you're praying something according to His will? Well, the Word of God. If you abide, Jesus Christ said, if you abide in my word, you're truly my disciples, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you abide in God's word, you're going to know what his will is. And if you're not abiding in his word, you want to know something? You're going to pray out of your own mind. You're going to pray out of your own fleshly desires. You're going to pray not in according to the Spirit of God. That's a fact. And we need to be praying according to the will of God. What is God's will? You know, you know I, I, I've been in ministry for over 30 years. I've served as a pastor for many years in different times. And I have people come to me and say, oh, I want to know what God's will is for me. Say, oh, it's easy. It says, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Well, I don't know what your situation is. I mean, I can look at you through the camera. Hello. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know what God's will is in your life. That whatever is going on in your life, you start to give thanks for it right now. You start to trust God that all things do work together for good. You start to praise Him because He's worthy of your praise. It doesn't matter what your situation is. Right. And you start to give thanks. That's His will for you. You start practicing His will and see if things don't change. Amen. For the unsaved, it's real easy. God desires that none should perish, but all come to everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, that's His will for the unsaved is to get saved. Amen. There you have it. There you have it, boys and girls. And That's God's will. For the saved, that you be given thanks and praising Him. For the unsaved, that you get saved. Hallelujah. So now you know how to pray. But, you know, when you don't know how to pray, here's what happens. When the people of God are not abiding in the Word, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Remember Ramah. Mm -hmm. And listen to this, all my political friends out there. The elders of Israel yes. gathered together and came to Samuel. Samuel was the prophet at the yes. time, right? At Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king to, for us to judge us like all the nations. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and appoint them a king. God said yes to their prayer. Yes. They said, We want a king so we're like the other nations. And God said, Okay, you can have it. The problem is, it wasn't God's will. Because yes. he spoke to Samuel and said, they have rejected me as being king over them. You've got to be careful what you pray for, because you're liable to get it. Mm -hmm. And you want to know something? When you have the heart of a bondservant, like the Apostle Paul did, Paul was a man of prayer. And I'm telling you, I know Paul prayed fervently. Paul prayed earnestly. And Paul was a righteous man, and his prayers availeth much. But there was a time in Paul's life when he had, was being buffeted by a thorn in his flesh. Right. And he went to God in prayer. And don't think he was casual about this prayer. Mm -mm. Don't think he was casual. He said, God, remove this thorn from my flesh. God said, no. So Paul, knowing what the Word of God says, kept diligent. He persevered. He pressed on. And he went back to God and he said, God, please remove this thorn from my flesh. God said, no. Oh. Paul still didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And he went and said, God, remove this thorn. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Should he have stopped the first time? I, uh, if, if, Mark, if you can get me to sit here in judgment of the Apostle Paul, may, may that the camera, the computer, the internet, the whole thing blow up. I, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I do know that God, he heard the voice of God, and he went on and lived a life in spite of that thorn in his flesh. Because indeed, God's grace is sufficient, and in Paul's weakness, God's power was perfected. And that's what it says. There are going to be times when we'll pray things, and God will answer you, but the answer will be no. But why? Because he desires the better thing for you. He desires the better thing. God's purpose in your life, he has a purpose. He has a promise. His promise is to transform you and bring you from glory to glory. His promise is to transform you and make you, mold you into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. If this is what it takes, hallelujah, I'm going to give thanks. If this is what it takes, I'm going to praise Him. You'll see examples of this uh, 
all over. I, I, I love that song, and I've, I've shared this before in, in other places. Give thanks, give thanks to the risen Lord. Give thanks, right? Yeah, the that was written by a guy named uh, Henry Smith. And he was going blind. He was in the process of going blind as he wrote that song. And yet, he writes, he inspired by the Holy Spirit, he writes this song, Give Thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I know I talk about this probably too much, but I got hit, and you know, you guys were there. Yes. I got hit by a speeding semi-truck in Central America. You know what I did? I laid there and I praised God. Right. And I'm not boasting in that. I'm saying that because God's That's grace right. was sufficient. Yes. And God, in the midst of that, because you want to know something, you're not going to go through anything that God will not give you the grace to handle. I don't care what it is. But God gave me the grace that night, laying there in, by the side of the road. And I, I was broken in body. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't broken in spirit, hallelujah. Amen. And I laid there and I praised God. And I gave thanks to God. And God ministered to me on that road. He'll minister to you wherever you are. Whatever, you, whatever you're going through. You know, but you need to be faithful to God. God will always be faithful to you. But you need to be faithful to God.